Okay, 21. So the diagram shows the prism A, B, C, D, E, F with cross-section triangle A, B, C. So that's the front face of this prism. Now they give us some information about this prism. We know that angle B, E, C is 40 degrees. So B, E, C. So that's basically from here to here and here all the way to C. So we can think of that one as 40 degrees. And they also tell us that angle A, C, B is obtuse. And what obtuse means is that it's an angle which is larger than 90 degrees. Okay, so angle A to C to B, and this part here is greater than 90 degrees. Okay, now for the next bit, it tells us that AC is 6 and C is 13. Okay, so let's go ahead and update this uh, prism. Now from A to C, we can just put a 6 enemies here. From C to E, which is um, the diagonal length, it's going to be 13. So that's quite useful. And finally, they tell us that the area of triangle ABC, so the front face, equals 22 centimeters squared. So what I'll do is I'll firstly just copy this triangle out. So just relabel it here. So you've got 6 over here. You've got an unknown angle here, which is obtuse. So we're going to call that X. And we know that the total area of the triangle is 22 centimeters squared. Now, one way to find the area of triangle is to use the general formula. And the general formula for an area of a triangle is always half AB sine C. Now, we can think of AB as two lengths next to each other with an angle C between. So, if I had to relabel this triangle, I could think of this triangle as A on the left, B on the right, and a big angle C in the middle. Okay, and now they want us to calculate the length of AB. And AB is just long horizontal length over here. So let's give this a letter and call it Y. And just a quick recap, we, we call this angle up here X. And we call this length CB as, well, we can just call it letter B, yeah? Just to match this one here. And yeah, guys, that's it. So all we need to do is basically calculate the letter B first from this triangle here. And then find out X. And then from X, we can find out Y. So let's begin. So to begin this, I'm going to go ahead and redraw this rectangle here yeah? because if we think about this is just um, a right angle triangle actually. If we look at the 2D perspective and we can solve this using Sokotoa. So let's copy this right angle triangle for a second. Yeah, We're going to have a triangle like this with a length of um, 13, an angle of 40 degrees, a right angle triangle and we're trying to find the length of CB. So CB is going to be represented by this letter B. Now to solve this easily use Sokotoa and according to Sokotoa we just need to label the corresponding sides. Yeah? So first things first we can see that number 13 is the hypotenuse and hypotenuse is always the long diagonal side and well the length opposite angle is just called the opposite O. And that's what we need. We don't necessarily need to like use the adjacent which is over here because we just need the two things that we're actually dealing with. Here we're dealing with an opposite and a hypotenuse. So anything that has O and H, that's going to be SO. Okay, and according to SO, SO tells us that we have sine for S of the angles of sine of 40 equals O, O being the opposite B, over the hypotenuse being 13. Now to find B, all we have to do is just rearrange to make B the subject. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 13 across. So we're going to have 13 times sine 40, and that's going to give us our B. And if you put this in a calculator, you should get a B value of 8 point, let's say, 356 dot dot dot. Okay, so let's just leave it to three decimal places for now, yeah? So that's B done. So we can just update this value B and just call it, what is it, 8.356, yeah? 8.356 okay so that's one done now we're going to try and find angle x here so let's go ahead and update this triangle over here so this b here we just said was um 8.356 and if we recall from earlier they told us that the area of triangle abc which is this triangle is 22 so what we could do we can just go ahead and update these these um, values here with numbers and make it equal to 22 so let's do it yeah so we know that the area of the triangle is half AB sine C. So it's going to be half times, well, our A and B in this case would be 6 and 8.356. So it be times 6 times 8.356. Uh, we don't know what angle is yet. That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to just leave it as sine X and supposed to equal an area of 22. Okay. So that's basically all of this part now. So all we do here is just literally simplify this. I would go ahead and divide 
all of these numbers across to the other side. So it looks something like that. We'll end up with just sine x on the left and we're going to have 22 on the right all over half times 6 times 8.356. And to get x, all we go do is separate sin from x. And to do that, it's literally the sine inverse, yeah? So it's going to look something like that. It'll be x equals the sine inverse of your whole fraction, yeah? So that whole fraction on the right side. And wherever this answer is in your calculus, so if you just smash 22 big fraction over half times 6 times 8.356, Three five six, you'll get some kind of small decimal like zero point eight ish, and if you sign inverse your answer, you'll get an actual degrees answer of sixty one point three five dot 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 degrees. However, guys, this is not the final answer because they told us earlier that the angle ACB was obtuse. In other words, X is obtuse, and if it's obtuse, it means it has to be bigger than ninety. So at the moment, it's currently in acute form. Now to change it to obtuse, all you gotta do is literally take subtract it from one eighty. So we can say, okay, 180 minus 61.35 should give us about 118.65 degrees. Now, this is the right one. This is the obtuse angle we need. So at this stage, guys, we're not actually done yet because we still have one more bit left. And that's to find the length of AB. In other words, find what Y is. And because we've got three lengths and one angle, we have to use the cosine rule. Now, thankfully, we're given the cosine rule formula. And if you guys are not sure, it looks like this. We say that we have an a squared, which equals a b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of the angle a. And you can see here that this only has one capital A. So this is the only angle here, whereas a, b, c are lengths. And this corresponds perfectly to this triangle. You can imagine that the only angle is here, the big A, which is 118. That means this corresponding length must be little a, which is y. So that's y squared. And that means b and c could be either 6 or 8.356. So let's, let's put all those values in here. So we're going to choose b as 6. So it would be 6 squared plus 8.356 squared minus 2 times 6 times 8.356 times cos um, 118.6 degrees. And yeah, so let's pop all of this in the calculator. Yeah? So if you put 6 squared plus all of this in the calculator, you should get a result of um, 153.822 dot dot dot. However, this is the answer of y squared, and we just care about y. So just go ahead and square root your answer, yeah? And then when you do that, you should get a final result of approximately 12.4 centimeters. All right, number 22. So... We've got the graph of y equals a cos x plus b, which is drawn on the grid. And here is our grid over here and our cos graph over here. And according to the question, they want us to find the value of a and the value of b. Okay, so before we try and figure out what this a and b represents, we need to first be familiar with a cos graph here. So for a cos graph, it looks a bit like this here. So imagine we've got just some random axes here. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch it. So we've got something like that. So this is just a random one. Let's just cut it through here, for instance, yeah? And it always looks like a bucket. So it always sweeps down, goes up, and then ends over here. So this could be some kind of bucket. We could say that the maximum value of a cos is 1, and the minimum value is minus 1. And the unique feature about these cos graphs is that every single point it hits, like at the peak and the bottom, it goes up in 90s, yeah? So we can imagine that along the x-axis, we've got 90 degrees here. Then the next one is 180, and the next one is 270, and lastly is 360. Now, to figure out basically what is A and B is, we just got to ask ourselves, okay, what happens between each one? Well, you can kind of see that instead of starting at, let's say, 0 degrees, the peak starts at 60. So essentially, this is shifted by 60 degrees to the right. Now, this B deals with shift, yeah? So this X plus B means it's shifted a certain direction. If we're going to say shift is 60 degrees to the right, we're going to have to write x minus 60, okay, not plus 60. If you write plus 60, it means you shift it to the left. So you've got to kind of think of the inside of where the x is as being done in reverse. So instantly, this means the b value will be minus 60. Now, the a in front of the cos means how much it's been scaled up by. Well, again, looking at this graph and this graph, we can imagine that the highest value is 1. Well, according to this graph, the maximum value seems to be here, which is actually... 2.5 and the minimum value again is minus 2.5 so actually this means that a is just 2.5 that's it guys we can say that the value a is 2.5 and the value b is minus 60 
And that's it. Now for the next bit, it says that another curve C has equation y equals fx. Now the coordinates of the minimum point of C are 4, 5. So you can kind of think of, let's say, well, we know what the graph looks like, but we can imagine it looks a bit like, let's say that, and this is your minimum point. It's 4, 5. Now write down the coordinates of the minimum point of the curve of equation y equals f 2 times x. Okay, so this is the same function. All it's saying here, compared to the original one, is that for all the x values, we now got 2x. But what this really means is that we should now half our x coordinates. So instead of 4, we're going to now have 2. And then the y coordinate stays the same. So it'll be 2, 5. Now for the second part, it says y equals fx minus 7. So notice how this minus 7 is outside the function. This means that this is a shift in the y axis. Now if it said plus 7, this means you, you add 7 to your y coordinate. But because it's minus 7, it means you've got to subtract 7 from 5. So 5 take with 7 is minus 2. And of course, 4 stays the same. And that's it guys, this is literally your corners done. So a particle moves along a straight line. The fixed point O lies on this line. Now the displacement of the particle from O at time t seconds, where t is positive, is s meters. So basically, they're going to use s as the displacement. And it's given by this cubic equation. Now at time big T seconds, the velocity of P is V meters per second, where V is big and equal to minus 5. Find the expression for T in terms of V, give you expression in this kind of weird looking third form. Okay, let's do this guys. Now, for these kind of questions, every time you've got displacement, velocity and even acceleration involved, so in other words, you've got S, V and A, you're essentially going to use differentiation guys. So let's do this, guys. So let's go ahead and differentiate the displacement equation to get velocity. So we can say, all right, v equals ds over dt. And when you differentiate, you simply just drop the power down and subtract it by 1. So 3 goes down, so it becomes 3t. And subtracting the power by 1, you get 2, so 3t squared. Repeat the next step, drop the power down, so you get 4 times 2, which is 8, so plus 8t to the power 1. If you're just left with a t of no power, the t vanishes, so you've got minus 5. And if you've got a constant, that disappears, because there's no t associated with it. And that's it, guys. So you've got a velocity expression of this. So you probably noticed that your result kind of resembles a quadratic equation, but this is an expression for t. So we're trying to solve in terms of t. Because you've got a kind of a quadratic, but it doesn't equal 0, all you have to do, guys, is subtract v across. So if I rewrote this equation, we now have 3t squared plus 8t uh, minus 5 equals v. And if I subtract v, you got 3t squared plus 8t minus 5 minus v equals 0. Now, to solve this easily, I'll just go ahead and use a quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is a bit like this. We say, all right, t has to equal minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And just to recap, a is just simply the coefficient of t squared, so a is 3, b is going to be your 8, so it's these two values, and c is going to be all of this, so c equals minus uh, 5 minus v. So now all we're going to do, guys, is just substitute all these variables into this equation and see what happens. So doing that, guys, you've got minus b, so it'll be minus 8 plus minus the square root of, well, 8 squared is going to be 64 minus, now you've got 4 times a, so 4 times a is, 4 times 3 is 12, so it'll be minus 12, times your c, which is minus 5 minus v, we're going to get to that in a second, all over 2 times a, well, 2 times 3 is 6. So, so far I think we're nearly there, we're actually nearly there. Now, let's go ahead and tidy up the square root sign for a second, yeah? So, I'm going to just work outside. So just pulling um, all of this bit outside, we got 64 minus 12 times minus 5 minus v. Just expanding the bracket, you're going to get 64 minus 12 times minus 5, which is plus 60. And then minus, and then minus 12 times minus v is plus 12v. Okay, so that actually went quite good. And tidying this up, 64 plus 60 is actually... 124 plus 12v equals uh, minus 8 plus minus the square root of 124 plus 12v over 6. So let's see, what can we factorize here? Well, they go into a 2 times table, 
and they actually go into the four times table. So we can factorize a four out and you're left with 31 plus three V. Perfect. So what we could do, we can update these values here and you'll notice that you're going to have now the square root of four times 31 plus three V. Now what you could do here is actually separate this. This is the same as the square root of four times the square root of everything in the bracket. Well, we know that the square root of 4 is just 2. So this is just simply minus 8 plus minus 2 times the square root of that bracket, 31 plus 3v over 6. And finally, guys, on the top line, we can actually factorize the 2. So it'll be something like this. It'll be, well, take 2 out and you've got minus 4 plus minus, and that becomes 1. So it'll be square root of 31 plus 3v all over 6 and actually if you cancel the 2 and the 6 2 and 6 breaks down to 1 and 3 and yeah guys that's actually the final answer the final answer is essentially well that's gone that's gone you don't need brackets it's just minus 4 plus minus all of that over 3 and yeah that's it we got the answer so we can say therefore capital T is just minus 4 plus minus square root of 31 plus 3 capital V over 3 and that's it, we're done. I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel. And if you've enjoyed the content so far, just go into my channel page, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications. And if you want, you can do personalize or all. And that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and see you next time. Ciao.